air traffic control versus pilots. Where's this guy going? He's on the taxiway. Air can to go around. Coming up. Hey 7-4 crew, welcome back. If you don't know me, my name's Kelsey. I'm a 747 pilot. My channel, 7-4 Gear, is all about aviation. First, I wanna let you all know I really appreciate all the videos that you've been sending me on this ATC versus pilots. I've gotten a lot that have been sent to me. If you have one that you wanna see in this series, the easiest place to send it to me is on my Instagram or onto the free forum, 74gear.com. Let's get into it. 956 here, Pop. Do you have the automated weather at Gillespie Airport? Uh, yeah, I got the, the information. So six here, Pop. Is that you? Tell me if you had the information. So that's the 956 here, Pop. Verify you have the landing weather at Gillespie Airport. Uh, yeah, I have the uh, weather information for Gillespie. Okay, with your call sign, please. Do you have the do you have the landing weather for Gillespie Airport? Uh, say again. Okay. Nine five six here, Papa. With your call sign, do you have the landing weather for Gillespie Airport? Uh, say again. Nine five six here, Papa. Nine five six here, Papa. Do you have the landing weather at Gillespie Airport? Yeah, I have the uh, weather information for Gillespie. Okay, I need you to tell me that with your call sign, please. 956, dear Papa, do you have the landing weather information for Gillespie Airport with your call sign, please? Uh, Gillespie, the wing, uh, wing from uh, the visibility turn station mouth. Uh, wing from to uh, wing com and uh, ultimate setting uh, 300. Flight 2521, contact approach 134.0. 34 nothing, good luck. That actually continued on even after I stopped this video. It actually kept going on, but you get the idea. It was just another few minutes of that. Here's the thing. One, I understand it from the perspective of flying in another country, speaking not your native language, speaking a second language, and missing and not understanding some things. So that I understand. But, and this is a big, big but here, this is probably a habit that this pilot has had and the flight instructor has probably not corrected them on it. So in this scenario here, this pilot should know what call sign is. So I'm guessing that they have developed this bad habit of not reading back things with their call sign. Now I've done this before and the thing is is that it's not something I'm in the habit of but sometimes people make mistakes. They miss it or forget it. But when something says read it back with your call sign and they remind you of it, it's something that you would think they would pick up on. Now, you would think that a professional pilot wouldn't miss something like that, but as you're gonna see in a later video, it happens. And it starts with developing those good or bad habits as you start your flight training and as you continue on in your career. The earlier you are in your career, the easy it is to break bad habits. There's certain things that air traffic control is just required to get from you before they turn you over to the next frequency or turn you over to the next sector or let you go to land or whatever. And if you're saying that you hear it, but you're not saying it with your call sign, then it leaves the liability on them. So it's just a good habit to always, always read your full call sign back. And if you do that on every transmission, people might get annoyed for some reason, but it's just the safest, easiest thing to do at all times. For myself, when I'm tired, I found that I make mental errors like forgetting to read back my call sign, possibly confusing numbers, or if you get a bunch of things at once, you might miss something or leave something out. And that's just been my experience. But again, I think this is just a bad habit from the pilot and not the correction from the flight instructor as they went through because I'm guessing this is just a habit that he's in of just reading back the transmission. And I think, this is my opinion, that this controller was super, super patient to ask him and phrase it three or four different ways to help him give that read back. And you heard that other pilot when he sent him onto another frequency was just kind of laughing because, he, you know, it'd be kind of funny to hear that again and again and again. 34 and I think good luck. The only other thing that the controller could do is say, I need you to say it like this, but you know, at this stage in the game, if you're out flying by yourself, you should be able to read back your weather of information that you're given and your call sign. And then the other thing about the weather, he's trying to read it back, but he obviously either didn't write it down or he didn't write it very clear. Wing from to uh, wing com. So the controller really made their best effort here. Now, you will see at a bigger airport, they're a lot less patient when you forget to read your call sign back. 
Something to know in this next video is the pilot uses the word localizer. And localizer means that you're lined up laterally to land on a specific runway. All right, let's listen to it. Tower 20, 117, localizer, four right. 20, 117, heavy, 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 runway four right, clear to land, wind 1306. Here land four right, Kuwaiti 117, thank you. Kuwaiti 117, heavy, reduce to final approach speed, you are gaining on top of your head. Reducing minimum speed, Kuwaiti 117. Kuwaiti 117, heavy, do you have the traffic score final on site? Clear. Kuwaiti 117, heavy, maintain visual separation with traffic. Do. Kuwaiti 117, heavy, confirm maintain visual separation. Clear. Kuwaiti 117, heavy, need to take your call sign with the redux. We do have visual contact with the traffic, touching down now. Kuwaiti 117, heavy. Go around, you're not complying with my instructions. Runway heading 100, maintain 2000. Okay, go around, clear right, heading, uh, confirm the heading. 100. 100. 20, heavy, turn right, heading of 100, maintain 2000 feet. Clear neck right, uh, 100, climbing 2000, 20, 117. And in the future, I don't mean to give you a hard time, but to read back with your full call sign is mandatory for us. I know some of you will say that this was overly conservative to send this guy around, but these air traffic controllers have parameters that they have to stay within, and this guy wasn't following them. When the controllers say, do you have visual contact, or do you, ha do you see some traffic, or do you have the airport in sight, all of that stuff, when they're asking you for that, what they're doing is they're going to transfer the responsibility from them over to you. So if you say, I have the airport in sight, then that tells them, okay, you're cleared for a visual approach which means I'm not gonna give you any more help, you're gonna go land on the runway. And in this case, what he's saying is, do you have the traffic in sight? And he's saying, yes, I do, but he's not saying his call sign. So the controller can't verify that it's the right guy, even though it's clearly the same voice, that it's the right guy that sees the traffic. What happens is on a visual clear day, like what I'm guessing this is, he's able to give a smaller area of buffer. And so he says, if you see the traffic, you're going to maintain separation. The responsibility is off me and it's on you. So if the pilot does something stupid, the controller can say, hey, I told him to maintain visual separation. It's on him. Now the pilot had another option here. He could have said, no, I don't see the traffic. In which case, he wouldn't have had the buffer and the controller would have sent him around. And after a long flight, he probably didn't want to do that. And obviously he saw the plane. He could see that the plane was touching down. On that long read back when he said, yeah, we see the plane touching down now, had he said Kuwaiti 117, it would have been no issue and he would have been able to land no problem. But because he didn't say that, he kept closing in on this other traffic and that became too close without having the visual contact and the confirmation from the other pilot, the controller really had no choice but to send him around. I've talked about in earlier videos, controllers will sometimes say, hey, there's traffic here and you can say you're looking. It's different. They're trying to point out traffic just for safety so you know, so you're not surprised, something like that. Another scenario that they're gonna try to give you a visual is, do you see the airport here, one o'clock? I talked about that in another video. And if you say, yes, I see the airport, that means great, it's over to you. If you say, I don't see the airport, they're gonna keep helping you and getting you closer and pointing out the airport until you see it. And you would think that an airport maybe eight miles away would be so easy to see. How could you not miss this massive airport? Uh, it's happened to me. I, there was one time I was flying and there was all these rain shafts. I was kind of a newer pilot and I was flying and I was flying into DFW, which is a massive airport. So we're flying into DFW, but there's all these rain shafts. And as we're coming in, they say, you know, airport here at, you know, two o'clock. And I'm looking, but with the clouds and the sun and the rain shafts, I'm, I'm looking at the wrong area and I'm like, I don't see it. And the other pilot's like, it's right there. And I'm like, I don't, I don't see it. And then we turned like five degrees and I was like, oh, I see it now. I was just thinking, okay, how dumb are you? Five degrees, you couldn't look five more degrees over. But anyway, it sometimes happens that you don't see the airport. Usually the other pilot will wait for you to see it or help you find it or see it. But if you haven't flown into a new airport sometimes, especially smaller airports or at night, it can be tricky to see. So the easiest thing to do, if in this case, if you don't see the traffic or you don't see the airport, just be honest. And then in this case, he would have had to go around anyway. But if you don't see the airport, don't say that you see the airport. You heard the controller let the pilot slide at first when he said, do you see the traffic? 
And that's because at that case, it's not an order. He's not needing anything. He's just asking if you see it. So he didn't read back the call sign and the controller let that slide. But then when the controller said, will you maintain visual separation from him? And the guy just said, will do or affirm. That's not enough for the controller to know because there's no call sign there. Listen again. What do you want, Subsidy? Have you confirmed maintain visual separation? Yes, what do you want, Subsidy? Have you need to say your call sign with the readback? We do have visual contact with the traffic touching down now. So this could come down to bad habits, which I'm guessing at this level of this guy's career, he probably doesn't have a habit of doing this. It could just be that he's tired, like I talked about earlier. It could be one of those situations, but it's definitely not a habit that you want to develop. And you heard that the controller was giving him some slack in the beginning when he was saying, yeah, I see the traffic. But when he needed him to confirm that he was going to maintain visual separation and he wouldn't say that with his call sign, he sent him around. Now I have some criticism for the controller in this video as well, but before I say this, I've started to get some air traffic controllers on this channel, and I'm curious to what your thoughts are on this, but it sounds like the winds are pretty calm and it's a clear day. In my experience, that is a scenario when pilots start to relax more. It's clear, the winds are calm, everything seems chill, you're just a little bit more relaxed. I don't know about you, but from the controller's perspective, but do you see that you send more planes around when the weather's bad, or when it's really calm and clear like this. Because when the weather's really bad, everybody on the flight deck is super, super focused. If the winds are calm and it's a clear day, sometimes you're just a little bit more relaxed. And I've seen guys go around more in that scenario than I do when things are, are really serious, when the weather's bad and things are the visibility's poor, things like that. People are more hyper-focused in those situations. Which is funny, because from a passenger perspective, when the weather is terrible, they're the most scared, but up there is when we're the most focused. And when the weather's calm, we're the most relaxed, and the people in the back are also thinking, oh, this is the perfect thing. But really, it should be hyper-vigilant all the time. But the reality is, is that when the weather's good, you're just gonna be more relaxed. Think of it like this. If you're driving your car, and it's just a clear blue day, and the roads are totally empty, you're gonna be more relaxed. If you're driving around and there's rain and wind and all kinds of stuff happening, you're gonna be more aware. It's the same thing when you're flying a plane. Now here's my criticism for the controller. The controller just sent this plane around. So that means these pilots transition from a pretty relaxed situation, getting ready to land, you're all set up, you're all briefed, you're ready to go, you're planning to land in just a couple of minutes, you've been flying for a long time, everybody's ready for their day to be over, and then you sent them around, which is fine, but here's the thing. Then, while they're on the go-around, there's a lot going on for us. We're in the middle of changing modes from getting ready to land to doing a go-around, which isn't something that we do a lot. So things are happening very fast for us. We're reorganizing everything. We're changing all the automation. We're making sure that the plane is doing what we want it to do. We're changing our heading. We're adding power. There's a lot going on. And then during that phase of flight, you're telling him, And in the future, I don't mean to give you a hard time, but to read back with your full call sign is mandatory for us. That's not the time to do that. Now, I've mentioned before, I don't like getting phone numbers and you don't ever want to get a phone number. But this might be of a different situation here. Had the guys landed and then been taxiing in and had the ground controller, for example, said, hey, we just had a quick question about that go around. Do you mind giving us a call? There's two things about that. In that type of format, the pilots are going to be a lot more relaxed. I mean, we're going to call either way. You tell us to call, then we're going to call. But in that, if you heard, hey, we had a question about the go-around, would you mind giving us a call once you park? We're going to feel a lot more calm than, hey, write this number down and call us once you get parked in there, right? You're going to, our stomachs are going to be dropped. Again, we're going to call either way, but it's kind of like getting a text from your girlfriend that says, we need to talk. It's never that and then something really good afterwards. It's the same thing. So that's just my viewpoint from a pilot for the controllers out there that watch this channel. In this scenario, if you needed us to call, that would be a much better way to format and phrase that to get them to call and not be stressed out or nervous or defensive once they start the conversation. Now, before we get into this next video, it's important to know Air Canada, what they've done is they've lined up, it's nighttime, it's in San Francisco, and they've lined up to land on the taxiway. So now that you know what's going on, listen to this audio. Uh, good evening, Air Canada 759 with you. Uh, have my speech visual to you, right? Air Canada 759, San Francisco, San Francisco, at right? Turtle Inman, T7, 08. No, not to you, right? Air Canada 759. And uh, so I just want to confirm, uh, Air Canada 759, uh, we see some lights on the uh, runway there. Can you confirm the clear to land? 
Terry came to 759, confirmed, clear to land, runway 28 right, there's no one on 28 right, but you. Okay, I count as 759. Where's this guy going? He's on the taxiway. Air Cam, the go around. In the go around, I count 759. 759, looks like you were lined up for Charlie there. Uh, fly heading 280, climb maintain 3000. Heading 280, 3000, that count of 759. Uh, United One, Air Canada flew directly over us. Yeah, I saw that, guys. 759, contact North Cal 135.1. We'll catch you in a couple minutes. Something that I was taught in flight school, and I'm sure a lot of pilots were taught this, I'm sure my flight instructor was taught this by his instructor, is that when you check in on a frequency and you say with you, most controllers hate that. Listen to what this guy says here. Uh, good evening, Air Canada 759, with you. Uh, Luckily, it's a habit that I broke. I think I read this book that was talking about radio phraseology years ago and it was saying, why are you saying with you? The controllers know that you're there. There's no reason for you to say it. It's just wasted space. So if you can break that habit or never start that habit, it's the easiest. There's no reason to say that. You could just say, San Francisco Tower, Boeing 123, ILS 28Right, for example. That's all you really need to say. If you start flying internationally and you're saying things like with you, controllers over there, when it's not their first language, may not know what you're saying or they're going to try to figure out what did he say? I was talking to a new pilot and he was actually asking me about that and here's the analogy that I gave him. If you invited me over to your house and I showed up and I walked into your house and I said to you, hey, I'm here in your house, you would look at me and be thinking, this dude's so weird, no wonder he makes YouTube videos. Obviously, I'm in your house. Why would I need to say I'm in your house? The controller knows that you're on their frequency. They have the information on you. Why are you telling him that he has your information? It doesn't make any sense. It's totally redundant. Now onto the serious part of this video. These pilots lined up on Charlie. They planned to land on a taxiway. Now when I put out the video about Harrison Ford, a lot of people were saying, how could you do that? How could you make such a dumb mistake? But honestly, of the two, this is way more weird and way more serious than what Harrison did. Landing a general aircraft in the day, single pilot, and landing on a taxiway, even though he went over the top of another plane, is a lot less serious and a lot more easy to imagine that happening than in this particular scenario. There are so many things for us as pilots to land where we're supposed to land, and the thing is that just, this honestly blows my mind that two pilots can be up there and both of them can be slid over onto a taxiway and do all the things that they did. It blows my mind and thankfully these other pilots, especially United, saying something to prevent this from being an issue. Honestly, they saved possibly hundreds of lives. Who knows what would have happened, but they definitely were aware and you're gonna see why in just a second. Let's talk about the things that were there to help the pilots to prevent this from happening. First, you have some approach lights. These things are sometimes called a rabbit, but there's these lights that are directed and line up on the runway. This is an example of what a rabbit looks like. Now, I know this isn't San Francisco, but it just gives you an idea of these lights leading up to the runway, which lets the pilots know this is the runway that you should be landing on. Second, I pulled this picture off my Instagram, so it's a little bit blurry, but very clearly you can see as you're approaching the land, what is a runway? It's very clearly marked out, all different colored lights. It's just another clue of where you should be landing. Another thing that we have on the flight deck, and I always use this, and I've actually never seen a pilot not use this, is the same system that we use to land with through clouds. We have that up in order to land even on a perfectly clear day. I've never seen a pilot not use this. And what that does is it gives you another verification. So those little crosshairs that you see, those point you to the very start of the runway. We use that when we're flying through bad weather. But I use it and most pilots use it even on a clear day. Why? Well, you don't want to be landing on the wrong runway, for example. That's more common. I've seen where a pilot line up on a wrong runway where there's two parallel runways that are very close. They roll out onto the wrong one and I go, ah, you're on the wrong runway. And they just kind of <laughs> slide it over a little bit to the side like that never happened. And most passengers and maybe air traffic controllers wouldn't even notice because you rolled out a little bit too early. You just kind of let it slide on over. So that's another reason that we do that. And so we have those crosshairs there and that says this is the runway that you're lined up on. If you're lined up on a taxiway, it would say you're not lined up on the runway. So it's just another check to make sure that you're landing where you're supposed to be landing. Then you hear the pilots ask if there's another plane on the runway. Listen. 
And uh, Tower, just want to confirm this uh, at camera 759. Uh, we see some lights on the uh, runway there. Across the runway, can you confirm the land? So this means that they think that there's other planes on the runway. Controller saying, no, there's no other planes on the runway, but they're obviously seeing something there because they're looking at the taxiway where there are some big planes there. They're seeing some planes and they just keep going. If a controller told me, no, there's no other planes there, but I saw a plane that was sitting on the runway, I'd be like, I'm gonna go around and have him probably grab some binoculars or something and look out there to see if there's something there because controllers are humans too, they make mistakes. So if you see something that seems odd, doesn't feel right, like planes, you very clearly you'd see planes and lights from planes and you'd see beacons and all kinds of other things that would indicate there's a plane on that runway, you would go around. For example, there was a plane that was facing them, they would see a green or red light or they would see things that would indicate that is a plane. There are no beacons that are sitting on the middle of a runway. So they would see the beacon and go, that shouldn't be on the runway. So you just do a go around. But they ignored that one as well. Here's what happened to grab United's attention. Most pilots will be listening, especially things that are involving their runway. They'll be listening and having what's called situational awareness. If you've been in a military or a combat situation, they're gonna hear things like head on a swivel or SA, things like that. And it's just kind of paying attention to what's going on around you. And that's what's happening here. When these Air Canada pilots say, are there anybody on the runway? And that's a runway you're about to take off from, your alert goes up, you go, wait, what? And so they'd be looking at the runway and then they're gonna look back at the plane because now something with involving a runway you're about to take off from, you wanna know what's about what's happening. For example, there's been times where I've heard planes getting cleared for takeoff and another plane gets cleared to cross that same runway. So when you're getting ready to take off or land, you start really listening to the other planes that are happening around you. So if you get cleared to land and then you hear the controller clear somebody to cross a runway, that's the runway you're planning to land on, you're gonna wanna make that inquiry really quickly. Hey, are we cleared to land? Are that guy crossing? Yeah, he'll be clear before you get there or whatever the situation is. So these United pilots were obviously paying attention when they heard their runway and they heard the pilot say, is there somebody on it? They looked at the runway to verify, also to help out the pilots because there, if there was something that was on the runway there, they'd want to report that to air traffic control to the tower and say, no, there's something on the runway, send them around or whatever. But they looked and then they looked at the plane and when they looked back at that plane, they saw he was totally not lined up with the runway, but they were lined up with the taxiway. So would Air Canada have continued and landed on top of those other planes and, and had a huge accident there in San Francisco? I mean, I would hope not, but they got really, really close to landing on top of another aircraft, which honestly, it blows my mind that with all those signs that they didn't do it. Had United not made that call, it's possible that it could have been a major, major tragedy. So Harrison Ford wanted to land on Charlie. Obviously Air Canada tried to land on Charlie. And you know, you would think with the cancel culture out there, I'm pretty sure that in the next few months you might see Taxiway Charlie closed at all airports. For this next video, what you need to know is that before we land at an airport, we get the weather there. Don't worry about all the words, you'll know when the part matters from the video. Runway 27 right, RNAV, runway 27 left, the perch is in use. Also landing and departing, runway 27 center. She's crushing numerous birds on and about the airport. <laughs> Archer 2326 Victor, you're on the middle Archer 2326 Victor, Sanford, ground, turn right, taxi, Bravo, Kilo, right side taxiways. You want to say a special thank you to whoever cut the aid at the who was behind the guy cutting the aid. Made a map for about 10 minutes up in the air, 2 All right, thanks. Uh, my supervisor made it, but I, uh, I helped out there. Which part? Pickle. I'm glad people can still have fun at work and get all the work done. If you want to see me having fun on YouTube as my second job, you're going to want to see some of the mean comments that people said about me. I put a link to that video right here. And if you want to see something a little bit more serious, check out this video up here. I look forward to hearing from you. Until then, keep the blue side up.